family from all over the world, you are welcome to day seven of worship and wonders. I hope you are so ready to download from God because there's something about, you know, spending time in His presence. There's something about being intentional in praise and worship. It opens up the atmosphere. And if there's anything I can sense is going to be released upon you, it's going to be the fragrance of His presence. And that fragrance is going to lead you to a new, a new season of favor. The Lord spoke to me. He said, today's session is going to come with a lot of spirit of joy. If you have been battling with depression, you've been battling with anxiety, you've been battling with discouragement, listen to me. Here comes your deliverance today. Here comes your deliverance today. I need somebody to put this as a comment on the status. Here comes my deliverance. Here comes my deliverance. Here comes my deliverance. I see people breaking forth, breaking out, breaking through, breaking into new levels. Here comes my deliverance. Can you put it as your comment? Here comes your deliverance. I say, here comes your deliverance. Zakuko Sotobo Kwakata. Here comes your deliverance. Your deliverance is here. Matu Shotoborolo. Kwakataya. Here comes your deliverance. Hallelujah. Mete Kuko Sosobo Kwataya. Nana nene 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 ne Giando Grumana ya Suzubo Kwakata. Here comes your deliverance. Hallelujah. Here comes my deliverance. I want you to declare it in the name of Jesus. Me tu shoto kru mana ya sike anda kri anda katukobo. Mada kru mana kri anda ke ya susubo kwa kata. Nangri anda ke ya so. Here comes my deliverance. I want you to declare it. Here comes anything that is holding you down. I declare you are delivered from it right now. Here comes your deliverance. Ne hu so so bo kwa taya. Here comes your deliverance. Hallelujah. I'm going to read to you from Isaiah chapter 61 from verse 1. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is up on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. So the anointing is designed to bring liberty to the captives. He said, The opening of prison to them that are bound. If you are bound by one thing or the other, receive your deliverance today. He says, verse 2 says, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Hey! And the day of vengeance of our God. And to comfort all that mourn. To comfort all that mourn. Verse 3 says, To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. So your destiny is to be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. And through your life, you know, it, it has been designed that God be glorified. So on this seventh day, I want you to just open up your heart as you receive from the Lord. It's going to be an unprecedented or unprecedented release. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The spirit of heaviness is gone. It's time to break through, to break through, to break out, to break forth into a new level. Into a new level. Are you ready? Somebody say, I receive. In fact, I need you to say, I receive it right now. I receive everything that God has for my new season. I receive. I will not be denied. I will not, I will not be compromised. I receive. Are you ready to receive? Everybody, are you ready to receive? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ege du shuto bo kwakata. Elelelele. Ye 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 ye. Glory to God. Receive. I receive all that God has for me in this season. I will not be denied. Glory to God. Batu Sokru Balakianza. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo. So good to have you, Big Bolaji.
How, how are you? Yes, sir. How are the... Uh, how, 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 how is the crew? We're doing good, sir. Crew, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know. I'm trying. I'm trying to remember the the, the nicknames for your children. Oh, my clients. <laughs> your client. Your client. Clients one. Clients two. They're, they're still. Uh, they're still trying to get over the Man Manchester United episode. So. Oh, they are Manche Manchester United fans. They are Man U fans. Oh, both of them. Ah, it's a very dangerous thing to be a Man U fan in this season, though. No? You know, I will not. I'm, be, I'm beginning to sense the mantle of Arsenal falling on my youth. Here comes their joy in Jesus' name. Here comes their joy. <laughs> my United fan, here comes your joy. <laughs> yes, so they need it, especially after the 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 walloping of this past weekend at all. Yes, they received they received mercy and grace. Five. The last the last time they were dealt with like that at home was was when Manch Manchester City they dealt with them was it six one or seven one a while ago, but that's been a while. Wow. Anyway, so good to have you. You know, uh, Thank you, sir. As as I was praying and preparing for this session, I had this clearly in my spirit. He said. I said, today's session is going to be about the unleashing of the spirit of joy. Amen. Amen. And, you know, different people are going through different things in this peculiar season. It's a peculiar season. It's a peculiar season. You know, there's so many uncertainties out there. There are people that have, loved, they have lost their loved ones. There are people that have lost their source of income. And there are people that are literally thrown into despair because what they built their life around, pandemic came and shattered it. That's and right. it, some people had it that by now they will be done with their building project and all of a sudden the cost of materials went up and they're like, okay, what's going to happen? Am I going to ever finish this project? And I believe different people are going through different things. But the way to victory is to switch on the spirit of joy. The Bible talks about the garment of praise. It talks about beauty for money. The, the, right. and, I, and, I, and I see. Now, one thing I know about you is your person exudes joy. Even beyond your, your songs, they, they, there's something about your personality. At least I've known you for over 20 years now. I've never seen you moody before. <laughs> I'm serious. All the times I've been in touch with you is the jovial mode you know, excited mode. And I believe there's something on you that is meant to be communicated to a bunch of people that are watching out. There's somebody covered up in anxiety, covered up in despair, is thinking, what am I going to do with my life? But there's something about the spirit of joy. When you allow the spirit of joy to take you over, what you thought you would need to solve will be resolved by God. Amen. So I'm going to turn Big Bola G loose right now, and I, and I trust God for a time, a time in his presence, a time of comfort, a time of refreshing, a time of restoration. Over to you. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. K. It's great to be here. Again, happy birthday. Um, both ways, happy birthday to the ones we've done and happy birthday ahead to the real date itself. <laughs> yeah, we're doing, we're doing like one and a half months of birthday celebration. <laughs> Greetings to you people out there. Um, there's excitement in Jesus. There's ex excitement in the Holy Ghost. It is good to rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. Um, I speak Yoruba, and um, the Yoruba translation of, of that verse has something to do with um, means, you know, boil boil in joy literally that, that that's what it means so in spite of how, what you feel in spite of what you're going through in spite of the pain in spite of the hurt jesus is still the most high god when we cry he's the most high god when we're in pain he's the most high god in our challenges is the most high god when the enemy comes in like a rushing flood he's the most high god when he raises a standard against them he's the most high god when we understand, is the most high God. When we don't understand, 
is the most high God. In everything we do, we see in our in our breathing, in our sleeping, he is the most high God. So consciously let the devil know that you know that your God is the most high God. He can take everything, but he can never, and he must never steal your joy. Just join me out with praise and with sing and worship him, the most high God. Simple song. Glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God, we bow before your throne. Glorious God, glorious God, beautiful King, excellent excellent Somebody say glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God. We glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God. Nothing, 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 nothing. I said to you, Lord, 
Wow. I don't know what it means to you. So when you declare, here comes my joy, your friends might not understand, people on your timeline might not hmm. understand, people that have seen you miss your mortgage might not understand, people that have seen you struggling with your student loan might not understand, people that have seen you struggling with your health, struggling with diabetes, struggling with leukemia, they might not understand that, but I saw your diagnosis sheet, but they don't know, they don't know what Jesus means to you, they don't know what he means to you. They don't know how far he has brought you. The one that brought you from the backside and gave you a seat in the front row is not about to put you to shame. For every shame, he will give you double. Every time the sentence is casting down, he has declared a lifting up. Here comes your joy. Your joy is here now. From this time forth, you begin to exude joy. You begin to exude joy. Everything around you speaks to joy. Everything around you responds to joy. In the name of Jesus, Go ahead, go ahead and just pour it on him, pour it on him, pour it on him. Thank him for his joy. Thank him for loading your atmosphere with joy. Thank him for every pain has become joy. Every hurt has become joy. Every cry has become joy. Every joy has become joy. <laughs> wow. Jesus. Thank you so much. Big Bolaji, thank you so much for this awesome session. Uh, God told me, he said, there are people being healed right now. You had symptoms on your body, but the symptoms are disappearing right now. Whether it's something curable or incurable. You know, there's something about joy. Joy opens up your faith capacity. The Bible says in, 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 in Romans chapter 4, verse 20, it said, Abraham staggered not at the promise of God, but was strong in faith. How was he strong in faith? Giving glory to God. Now, maybe until now, you gave glory to the devil by focusing on the situation. Now flip from that and focus on Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. And as you begin to celebrate him and rejoice in him, I see that situation turn around. Whether it's a family situation, it's a marital situation, it's a job situation, it's a health situation. Whatsoever you need right now, receive it. The Bible says, ask that you may receive, that your joy may be full. I declare over somebody in this season, even as you join me in celebrating God in these 30 days towards my 58th, I declare your joy is full. Your joy is full. Your situation changes career-wise. Your situation changes marital-wise. Your situation changes every-wise. Declare a turn around. A turn around. Bipolaji, let me share a testimony with you. Uh, you know, that weekend of celebration that we had in Lagos about two weeks ago, you know, the few days after that weekend, you know, the, the Sunday, you know, we had a big event at Grandior, and towards the end, the Lord told me, he said, there's an anointing here to turn things around, and, and along the line, I think I mentioned the issue of, you know, I mean, there are people here that supernaturally, you know, God is going to hook you up. So there was a lady in that meeting who is in her 40s and has never been married and desires to be married. Do you know within a few days, a suitor came after her and came after her, and I'm, talk, talk, I'm not talking about a correct suitor. No <laughs> bad <badness. laughs> Correct suitor. By two days ago, she was messaging me, said, in fact, the person is already talking marriage. And I'm like, okay, let's slow him down. At least develop friendship. But just to let you know what God can do. Somebody who in her 20s, 30s, 40s, did not get anybody to ask for a hand in marriage. Now in her 40s, just because the, the God turned turn on, turn on the focus, the light in that direction, things turn around. I declare in a moment, somebody under the sound of my voice, the situation of your life is about to turn around. There's somebody on this platform, there's a product you've been making for years. And in fact, between four and five years, you've been doing that product. But of late, you've been so discouraged because it seems nobody is interested in that product. But the Lord told me, the Lord told me to tell you, is that very soon you're about to be connected in high places. And the same product that you've been pushing that could not, could not get God pushed supernaturally will be announced everywhere. And it's going to look like you just made the product. And yet the product has been around. But now, by favor, that product is about to rise in value, rise in patronage, Amen. and things will begin to happen everywhere for you. That's what I had. Things will happen for you everywhere, everywhere. There will be no aspect of your life that will not be touched by the presence of God. Wherever you Amen. turn to, 
favor we meet with you. Your story will turn around. You will have a cause to celebrate in the name of Jesus. Big Bolaji, thank you for bringing the spirit of joy. You know, God spoke to me specifically. He said, my servant that is coming today is going to come with an anointing of joy. Some of you, you will not even be able to explain. You just realize for the rest of today, you are smiling, you are laughing, and you are wondering, when was the last time I did this? God told me, he said, don't stop laughing. Don't stop rejoicing. Because your victory, your breakthrough, your next level is in your joy. Maybe until now, you are full of anxiety. You are full of yeah. switching to joy. When you switch it to joy, you know, faith kicks in and the supernatural is the experience. I announce the supernatural in your health, the supernatural in your finances, the supernatural in the different aspects of life. And, you know, God told me to agree with you, people like you, concerning your health, I declare perfection. Amen. I stand on the authority of Jesus and in obedience to his spirit. I join my faith with yours to receive the needed supply of the spirit where the perfection of your health is concerned Amen. i declare that testimony is perfected that's what i had people like you don't go to me Amen. and say your testimony is perfected before we round up Amen. this uh, for some of you that don't know i've known people like you for a long time in the 90s <laughs> some, of, some of you are still crawling and i always tell story, and it's a story i will never forget drama. Inauguration of Rema Chapel, Ilori. Was that 95 or 96? 96, Presidential Hotel. Or Presidential Hotel. Hotel. Yeah. I saw this young man, this teenage young man, full of joy, chubby young man on the drums. That was my <laughs> first encounter with Bipolaji. And for some reason, I could not forget. It just marked my mind and you know, the Lord told me, he said, I designed you to be an instrument of praise. That's what I had. Amen. He said, you were designed to be an instrument of praise. Now, you know, you went to university. What did you do in university, by the way? Estate management. The okay. Department. So, how was from estate manager, management to music ministry? Can you tell us the story? I know, I know it's a family business, really. Yeah. Your, your brother your brother is on this on this Easter live back. I saw him <laughs> comment. So he said, for those of you that don't know, Bipolaji is the is the junior brother of official Muiwa, an anointed man of God based in United Kingdom. I remember we met about 20 years ago or thereabout. We met at the airport and we had the chat. He came to minister in Chicago. I was fly out of Chicago, and that's why I met official Muiwa. But Bipolaji, tell me. Why instrument of praise? Now, you didn't tell me this. God told me. He said, I designed him to be an instrument of praise. What is your story? How did you end up in music ministry? Um, you know, even, even being able to stand, stand, um, stand in Jesus is quite interesting. My, my salvation story is, um, is a long one that goes in and out. Um, my, my journey, let, let, me, let me fast forward to my journey from you know, loving Jesus, understanding in music. Um, I've always loved music. Um, at some point in college in London, I was trying to do music. Then I was doing hip hop. That was the days of Eric B and Rakim and Public Enemy. And um, then I thought, oh yeah, I'll be, you know, I'll be, I'll be rapping, and you know, we'll be doing, doing rap. But at some point, that Jesus came in and um, was able to solidify relationship with Jesus, I realized, you know, the end result has to be heaven. Finishing strong is important. And um, if I'm to finish strong, let me stand where I'm supposed to stand. And um, started, you know, delving into praise and worship, started just enjoying God in praise and worship. Um, that's that's where it started, just enjoying God in praise and worship, just loving on my Jesus. You know. And I remember many comments then, many Many different comments, many different thoughts, many different line of thoughts. Um, and after studying estate management, um, what came to me naturally, what 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 came to me, or comes to me naturally to be, is music. So yes, as a career, I had um, estate management at hand that could easily start feeding me. But you know, I needed to step into the plan and purpose of God which was to just exude his praise, um, to give him glory in the land of the living. 
even though everything around me and in the organization I'm in um, was saying different things, but I just chose. I, I knew that was what God was saying. You know, just stay in my praise, stay in your lane. Um, I wasn't after releasing a quick song. I wasn't after releasing a hit song. Um, I wasn't after writing a song that goes to the end of the earth. I was just after consuming the praise of Jesus, just pouring praise on Jesus. You know. I remember one day I was having a, a conversation with Ben Garden then. Early days, early days. I'm talking of I'm talking of early CLF days, in the days when Pastor Colo Ladumboy was CLF president. You now, know, you now you are you are taking me back <laughs> memory. <laughs> You know, uh, you know when Pastor Kola was pastoring CLF, that was when I was pastoring King Sword Fellowship, which was then. Which you, were leaving, you were not pastoring; you were leaving Ife then, so we can't say you were pastoring then. Because <laughs> <laughs> I remember okay. I, went, I went for one King Sword Fellowship at Mayfair, um, Mayfair Hotel. I think that's where the program was held. You know, and I kept saying to Dale Moore and Boy God Debbie then, I said, ah. Then they had the big hills come minister. You know, Boyga was actually my class. Wow. wow. We did pharmacy together. <laughs> Boyga yeah. was one of the youngest in my class then. He was he mommy's must boy. Been. He must have been because, you know, Boyga is Oma Bota, Oma Mommy. I know. I know, I know. <laughs> and, and the big hills needed someone to play drums then. Uh, because somehow the drama had misbehaved. And I stepped in, Dilma was playing keyboard. And I kept saying to Dilma, this is not a fellowship. This is it's a full-blown full, full blown church. And I was like, no, it's, it's a school fellowship. Nah. You know, and then they would say, Bonje, Bonje, behave yourself, Bonje, behave yourself. I was like, ah, hello, it's a fellowship church now. Hey, hey, you know? Because, you know, the, the, the mode of operation, the way the service ran, it was not about any person. It was all about Jesus. It, it was just about showing people the light of the gospel. Even in you know, those early days, I mean, prior to that, and this is straight up, I've never, never seen anyone slain in the Holy Ghost. Apart from when I go to Rema Chapel, Tanke, and we go for YMTS, and then, you know, Reverend George comes on, and he's praying for people, and people are just dropping. I've not seen that anywhere else in any church. So now walk into something that they said is a school fellowship, and people are just falling left and right. I'm like, ah, she was Jen Wan, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, met, I remember saying to, I, I remember saying, saying to Dale more, and you know, and it was a joke we cracked for many years that I uh, by Minishubu, I just, by the time I was saying the fifth Minishubu, I was actually getting up from the floor. <laughs> wow. Yeah, even, though, and that, even though at that time, I didn't understand the full experience. That's the truth. I didn't understand the experience. That's the truth. I didn't understand the experience. But the fact that, you know, even there and then, the Holy Ghost could meet me at that point, you know, was quite touching for me. And, you know, Situation and incidents like that, you know, make me realize that just stay in your lane, just stay in the portion God has allotted to you. Don't cross lanes, don't be in a hurry, hurry to cross over. Uh, many might do what you're doing, but many are not sent to do what you are doing. Hmm. You know, so you have been sent to a specific lane, stay on that lane. No matter how noisy it gets, no matter how rowdy it gets, no matter uh, what distractions come the way. And distractions do come, you know, financial distractions, um, peer pressure distraction, family distraction. So if, if you don't know how to manage and, and draw from your mentors at time, you might, you might miss track, you might miss your lane and, and get it all modeled up. You know, so for me, it was, it was praise worship from the start and it's praise worship till now. Um, that's why people say to me, oh, how come you're able to... Just come on stage and I said, just come on stage and praise God now. It's not about any musical arrangement or any hypo dramatic activity. You know, it's not about jumping and rolling on the floor. No, no, just come and praise Jesus. The way you praise Him in the corner of your room, the way you praise Him in your kitchen, the way you praise Him in your shower, just, just come and do that. And allow Him guide you and lead His people to green pastures. And, and I'll just put this out there because we're in this conversation. As a gospel music minister, your primary assignment is to Jesus, you know, pour your worship on him. Your second assignment is to open up that atmosphere. It's not your assignment to run deliverance service. It's not your assignment to prophesy. If he comes, it's fine. But it's not your primary assignment. I see a lot of gospel music ministers now. They get to a program. They've been invited to minister for 15 minutes. For 10 minutes, they're talking and prophesying. I'm talking about kingdoms, 
I'm talking about inheritance. I'm talking about, you know, it's, that's, that's not what we, we call you to do. Come and open up the atmosphere. Let the prophet or the pastor that God has sent to that season come and round up the job. But uh, again, that's for someone out there, you know, get your assignment right. Hear it correctly. Don't <clears throat> mess up your head. Hear it correctly. Don't think because some people are doing it, you're allowed to do it. No, they're doing what they've heard and the instructions they've been given, they've been aligned. That's not now an entry point for you anytime you get on stage. You feel, oh, when I get on stage, I don't need to say this and say that so that people can key and key. That, that just wasting your time. You run out. You run out. You, you, your candle will go out too soon. Stay in your lane. It is in your yeah. lane that your path will shine brighter and brighter. You know, it is when you are in your lane that you can, you can fulfill that scripture. The path of the righteous. The question is, whose path are you on? Are you on your path? Before you now say it's a path of the righteous. So you are not on your path. You are not on your path. You are quoting that scripture. Your path is not shining brighter and brighter. It's shining bright. And it looks like it's getting brighter and brighter. But at some point, the oil you are running on will run, will run out of. Do you not run out of oil in Jesus' name? So my, 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 journey, my journey is not a conversation for uh, this is life. Uh, one day, one day we will have yeah, he's, the, he's, okay, he's, he's used to have testimony evenings where to bring ex cultists. I remember I went, I came for one at Memorable Gardens in Lagos, in Kedja, a place called in Kedja, in Lagos, Nigeria. And we had deep cultists, people who, people who I know were cult members in their school. <laughs> I know them, number one, they are fraternity people. We're giving testimonies of how Jesus turned their lives around in King's Word and this, and, you know. And I know that that kind of evening will happen again where some of us. We'll come and share our testimonies of smoking and drinking. <laughs> so how, you how, how wow how they didn't keep up on us. Well, you know, before we round up, interesting of your brother is online. I want to, you know, I said something about family business. What was was he in any way, any way influential? In fact, if he's available, I'm going to bring him on. Was he was he in <laughs> any way influential? Let me send invites just in case he might be able to come up. Was it in any way part of your influence on you as far as music ministry is concerned? In, in, in terms of music ministry, um, not too much. But in terms of life and family, very much. I mean, I literally grew up in his hands. Um, me being in London was from my elder, from our, our elder sister, our first born, um, Pastor Buki. I go, oh, there's our father. Yeah. <laughs> father hey. It's a What's family happening? of nurses. <laughs> What's happening? My baby, 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 baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because B, I'm I'm listening to you know, how much influence this, this yes, your big brother I mean, had on you. I mean, in music, in music, maybe like 40, 50, but in life, character and family. 100%. Um, at the time that I became a rebel and became a terror in the neighborhood, in school, and my brother was the perfect prefect. He was the school prefect at Bishop Tennyson's. And here comes this rowdy Nigerian African boy that just starts terrorizing school. You know, I started, you know, having a go at my teachers or lecturers. I started beating up people in the neighborhood. I just became a terror. You know, he still, he still nurtured me at that time. You know, even when when my my elder sisters and everybody planned a coup that I should come to Nigeria for holidays, I didn't know they were just planning me out of London, Jejeli. <laughs> and I got to Nigeria on holidays. I was on holiday for 19 years, Dr. K. For 19 years, <laughs> I couldn't step out of Nigeria. It was a perfect coup, you know. But even through all that, my brother was there, you know, he would nurture. I remember one one very painful time where he cut off funding me and he said, I'm not giving you any money ever again. That was the days of Western Union. You know, he said, I'm not giving you money again. I'm not sending you any money. I was like, ah, end of the world. They're not sending me money. Even your holy lady. They're not even a good brother. I became more dramatic. <laughs> man didn't even look at my drama, man. He didn't. Except I was dying of a health matter or a mental issue. My brother was not going to send me any money, which never came up then, you know. And it was at that point that I learned how to 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 manage little business how to make money you know i started a popcorn business in school uh, with a juice center you know then you know i started getting more invites for ministry 
and and the great thing is jesus was not waiting for me to be perfect because i remember when i started praise and worship and i was doing praise and worship in um bishop by my family church victory chapel sometimes i'll get to the church thinking of beer Martin Moti, for those who understand Yoruba. <laughs> but Bishop Mike will still greet me. He won't hug me to let me know that I can spend the day. He's okay, go and do what God has asked you to do. We'll come back. And he never, till tomorrow, he has never once mentioned my drinking or my smoking. Till tomorrow, not once. And all through that stage, my elder brother was there um, talking me through the times that I became a terror to our late parents. I sold all our chickens so I could come to London. And the person I was supposed to do the visa messed up. My, he just took my money. At some point, Baba Bera said, we should come and pray in Agbala's room. My mom dropped me in Baba Bera's house. I was there for months. Baba Bera would take us to prayer land. He would take me on, on prayer land praying. 2 a.m., we have come to Belastra and Gidi. In the middle of the night, um, some of your friends were there. Atere, Atere, Atere was there. Um, um, Okay, don't let me mention too many names. So some of them are people that okay those wells. So they are big people. Don't let me mention their names. I was a small boy, and I've seen a small boy in their midst, you know. And I will follow them to Bella. And before 5 a.m., we are back on Ori Leyanu, Ori Road. For those who know Baba Dera's church, we're back there. And Baba will now come, and they want to repay your boy. And somehow, God did not show him, because God could have just revealed it to him and said, ah, a young boy, you are coming from so so and so so and so so place. God never revealed it to me. He just allowed us to go through that process. God brought us through, you know, churned us, you know, allowed us to burn where we needed to burn, allowed us to scar where we needed to scar. But at no point in time did my elder brother give up on me. Um, till tomorrow, I mean, I still do things that upset him a lot. He'll just come and start speaking English. When he starts speaking English, I know I don't see what he gets, but when he. <laughs> So for, for me, for family character, he's been there all the time. Music just happened. I think music is just um, uh, a result of our mother's prayer. Hmm. Prophecies that she, she had received and things that she had declared into the heavenlies. That's all I can say because, you know, they were setting up for different things. They, they were setting us up to take over the poetry, setting, up, setting me up to be... Um, an agricultural health engineer, setting my brother up to come and manage business, our elder sister to come and take over veterinary medicine, herbal medicine, you know. But in you know all that, she, she would hear my mom declare, if you're alone, you go get she share, if you're alone, you go get she share, and things like that. And she would pray us into anything. You know, after beating, is praying. Once with my mom, once she's finished beating you, is praying. That thing that she beat you for, she now prays inside you. And I, to me, I think that's one of the reasons we're both, we're both uh, very much in the line of lifting up the name of Jesus. Because that's what it's about, lifting up the name of Jesus. Wow. Wow. Let us welcome the ambassador. I call him the ambassador. Official Mwa. It's so good to have you this is, is afternoon in UK. And, you know, this wonderful man, Big Bolaji, uh, we know that you have been of a great influence. You are like a father, and I understand that. You know, I'm eight years older than my middle junior, and I know what it means to be a mini father growing up. But I want to ask you, how has it been watching him translate from the person you knew as, as a teenager to becoming an instrument of praise today? Over to you, sir. Dr. K, firstly, happy birthday to you. Um, and um, it's, it's such an honor to have the opportunity. I, I hear so much about you. My brother gives me the lowdown of the, the history of, of the church movement in Nigeria and, and your place uh, and, and how some of, the, some of the big dogs and some of the puppies who were trying to look like big dogs, you know, they were people that you, you, you uh, were ahead of them and, and led them. Uh, and my brother speaks in such fond uh, terms of you. Um, and so I'm grateful to, and I've, and I've seen you with, with some, of my, uh, some of my folks, some of my, my dogs, as we say here, uh, but Pastor Toby is, is one of them who I, I love dearly. Um, oh yeah, Toby, so, so dear to my heart, I love him. 
So, 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 but anyhow, um, Dr. K, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm only, honestly, I'm on here because my baby's on here. He's a big man, but we call him my first son. He's one of my favorite worship leaders in the world. Um, wow. He's, a, he's crazy. He's crazy. He, God knows. He was, he was the cause of many prayer meetings for my mom. I remember one year they told me of all the things he'd done. I was so upset. And I sent a message to him. I said, I will kill you. And we will <laughs> bury you. And we did you know, all that nonsense. And he just laughed. You know, but but for for someone, you know, I know your your thing here is joy, um, and and I have to say, I mean, there's so much to say, but if if you'd permit me, one of the things people don't realize about this brother is they see him on stage. He's so rambunctious, he's so energetic, uh, and and people assume he's trying to wind them up. What they don't know is it's from the repository of experiences of God delivering him. Listen, Dr. K, one year, this, I'm now I'm sitting in, in my studios here at Premier Radio in, in London. I'm actually on air doing radio, but because of him, I came off air. Now, this, du this dude, he was leading worship in a church. He left the church to go home. There were armed robbers dressed as working and I had to go home whilst I was in in the uh, in the car taking me home I fell asleep and dreamt that my brother uh, had died on the same stretch of road that my uh, my mother died on and and I, I came to not many hours later I got a call saying this young man had been shot uh, by these armed robbers. He'd come from leading worship in church. The bullet went in his belly, came out, went into his, into his thigh, missed his main artery by five inches, Dr. K. Hmm. If he had ruptured, he would have died in minutes. Now, here's the thing. When, I, when they put me on the phone to speak to him, you would not believe what Big Bolaji was doing. Hmm. This is his blood was going. They said his flesh was falling away, and they were they were trying to do whatever they could in whatever crazy hospital he was in. He was singing. He was singing about the wonders of God. Hmm. So when people see him on stage, be dancing, be de it's not just because he wants to get you going or because he's the boy was singing. Well, he's a big man, you know. He's a, he's, he's a father of children. He was singing. <laughs> when things were bad, when his life was ebbing away. So, so for me, when I see him, I, I'm grateful to God. I mean, watching him on your session, uh, talking about, I mean, this is, this is a cat who, who had the opportunity uh, to do all sorts, but God arrested him. And I, and I would also say to someone who has a troublesome son or troublesome <laughs> daughter, do, uh, Wait for the Lord and be of good courage. Because hmm. if God can arrest Bolaji or Lairawaju, actually his name is Kolade, that's what we call him in the family. But when he started acting crazy and they repatriated him to Nigeria, my mom said use uh they, they should use his middle name, which is Bolaji, because his name Kolade, they said that was what was worrying him. <laughs> <You know? laughs> The Ola, the Ola was too much. <laughs> now, now, Dr. K, this fella left London as an armed robber at the age of 13. <coughs> he had everything you could, but he was, he was arrested. And I remember it very well. I remember it. It, was, it was on my birthday. He was arrested. And before you knew it, my sister had arranged for him. They just got him out. Look, I didn't know my brother had left the country until nine hours after he was gone. That's how much of MI5 job they did on him. But if God can arrest... A, and then, by the way, Dr. K, he gets to Nigeria, starts doing drugs. Stuff that he wasn't doing here. He got worse in Nigeria, where they thought they would sanitize him. But, but God, the God who already knew what his plans were for him, arrested him in such a way that even when the kid was... When he thought he was being smart drinking and going to church 
my mother was praying some prayers to the point where the the, the turning point for him and, and and every pun intended uh turning point he was in a car traveling from one place to another it was in an accident the person next to him had their head cut people were injured in the car bolaji was the only one that wasn't hurt huh. to my mother and he says Mommy, which is what we call my mother. We call her mommy and my dad, Baba. He said, mommy, okay, I'm ready now. So God knows how to hem your loved one in. So I want to encourage you. Uh, rejoice in the Lord. Trust in this God. He's a God of faithfulness without injustice that you too at some point will stand and say, if it not been for the Lord who was on our side, or if it not been for the Lord who was on our side, when the enemy came like a flood, we would have died. But look at Balaji, <laughs> I was escape like a bird out of the snare of fowler the snare is broken we are escaped Hallelujah. in the name of the lord and for someone who's struggling with their loved one or with the husband that's gone gone astray don't struggle go back to god because our god is a god who can restore and there will be joy in your home so dr k you know there's so much i can say about this brother wow He's, wow uh, uh, it, 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 may, may, maybe you need to write a book about him. Oh, we're working on. We're working. On, the only problem is there's some chapters we can't make public. Dr. Okay, <laughs> you don't write a book. <laughs> wow, wow, wow! You know, I, I, I call you an ambassador, sir, because I mean, I see your work, I see what you represent, I see you as a bridge. United Kingdom, and thank you for such, I mean, we don't get to talk like this all the time, but I want to use this forum to appreciate you standing for the gospel. And, you know, because we're, we're living in a generation that compromises so easily. And there's so, many, so, so, so much enticement out there, so much temptation for standing for the truth. You know, people that didn't know your history would just think, oh, in the last few years, it came into prominence. But those of us that know, know that you've been doing this for such a long time, for decades. And thank you for standing for the truth. I was so excited when I saw the honor United Kingdom conferred on you. Was it last year, two years ago? I was just so, so thrilled. And I want to say, I love you. And, you know, I, I celebrate you a lot. And thank you for raising this young man. Thank He's you. still a young man. Thank, thank you. And, and, and you know, just just to say real quick, uh, and forgive me for being so loquacious. Please feel free, feel free. Brother said he said some things about uh, the 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 things people get into that that are on vogue. Worship leaders get into, in the, and it's a conversation him him and I have all the time. And I'm always encouraging just just stay focused because there are some things which are popular to do, which people do now because because of the following they want, because they need some money in the economy. And it's great, that, you know, they do those things. But, and, and, and you know, and, and you know, Dr. K, with your minister brothers, you know that, uh, okay, certain people, they, they, know the, they know the equation. If you want to draw a crowd, bring a big name. If you want to draw eyeballs, bring someone with massive social following. And so people have learned that too, and learned to, to, to put steroids on their on their ministry and their platform so they they grow it abnormally which is why ministers will go to india to get power and all such things it's hmm. because they're all hung we're hungry for prominence right now but i thank god for kaya de karimu Waju, that's my father and shola latundu Waju, who gave us a grounding our our beginnings was in the church of england it was in an anglican church and so uh, when we came to to this ministry thing, uh, Dr. K, I remember one of the most prominent bishops in the world saying to me years ago, he said, um, we were, you know, you, you know, God is elevating you. Just start a church, start a church. And in four years, you'll have 2000 members. And that that will be the support base for the projects you do. <laughs> so be like, so the people of God are a support base for projects. God, <laughs> And and that and you know well, Doctor K, that's the that's the 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 those are the things people look at. And so when my brother is saying, uh, "Listen, just focus on your lane," I know it well because there's so many things I could have gotten involved with, uh, hmm. be to be in certain places. Um, I've had the opportunity to 
to be i mean but thank god that he was kind enough um that we don't have to play the games of ministry uh, we don't have to so much so uh and and that meant that meant uh, uh that meant not being in certain platforms that meant not being always on on people's list but it's hmm. because god had already blessed with a platform where I do a TV show. They say 70 million people watch. Dr. K, Turning Point, which we do in your country, Virginia Beach, uh, every year, Dr. K, I can tell you, CBN uh, do a research to show how many people are engaging with it. I can tell you as a matter of fact that for the last few years, on an average of 10 to 11 million people make the call when I give the call to say, listen, call now if you want to be born again. Or to be hmm. 10 million, 11 million people make the call. A fraction of those, maybe about three, four million, become a member of a church, the data that we have. And so, so for me, I'm, I'm grateful to God that He allows me to do that. So, you know, I, I don't have to try to be in certain circles. And then I do my own, do my own, do my own stuff. So much so, Her Majesty the Queen, for the first time in the history of her giving awards, decides to give it to a gospel singer, an OBE. Now, let me tell you, Doc, when they gave it, I thought it was a mistake. And I said, I said to Pastor Matthew Ashimolo, I said, listen, I'm taking it to our village. Because <laughs> we come from the same village. I said, I'm taking it to our village just in case they want it back. They can't have it back. <laughs> but all that to say that uh, God is not, he's not, he's not asleep. And, and and if it was about size, God would have chosen India or Nigeria over Israel. Hmm. So don't get confused about hmm. uh, And I'll say again, for, for someone who's listening, if it was about size, Jehovah would have chosen India or China, but he chose Israel, the tiny country. And look at what God is doing with and through Israel. So don't get confused by by wow. the the muscles of some bodybuilder who has put put some ministry uh, ministry <laughs> ministry uh, uh, steroids in their in their palm. So so it looks it looks big. Uh, do not be deceived. God is not mocked, man. Oh, wow, wow. But, okay, I, you know, you know, <laughs> yeah, but, 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 but I don't bore you, man. <laughs> this, 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 no. Let me tell you, you don't know what you've touched today. This is, this is deeply prophetic, and I believe this is even beyond us. God planned this. Mm. God planned this. You know, I had an encounter with God last year, and He told me, he "says Son, will you be, will you, will you be fine to be a Mordecai that will." allow Esther to go into the palace and you just be fine to be at the gate. And I said, fine. Anything you ask me to do, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. And the Lord began to speak to me. This was about a year ago. He said, there are a lot of people, there are some people I want to move into king, into, into palaces in this season that I want you to be behind the scene, working with them, ministering to them. They'll be more popular to you than you. They'll be more known than you. Yep. But that's what I need you to do. And I said, Lord, I'm fine. Come on. I'm fine. No, no, but, but Dr. K, you see, people wouldn't understand how difficult that is in the job you do because, uh, and, and especially in the environment you're in, which is North America, because profile is everything. And if you, if you, want, you want the numbers, get the profile. Even when you have celebrities in your church, you use them to build a profile so that, you know, the, you, know you, can, you can be on CNN and all that. So they see that. So, so, Dr. K, people wouldn't understand the sacrifice it takes to follow God as, as, a, as, a, as a preacher, as a set man, because uh, all they know is this social, social media generation, this, hmm. this quick generation where uh, it, it's all about how it looks. It's all about how it looks. If, it, if, it's, if it's got 10,000 followers, it can't be that hot. If it's, a, if it's an Instagram live that's got 200,000 people, boom, something's happening there. It must, there must be something there. Well, you know, I, I mean, I worked with, I looked after, in my days in a record company, I looked after Mariah Carey, Bob Dylan, Maxwell, Fugees. And Mariah, Mariah could sing 
she could sing and hit some notes that people would say, oh, I feel the spirit. And what they don't realize is what, it, what she was doing is she's hitting notes which are moving so fast that when they hit your body, it's just the science of it. The speed at which they hit your body makes your body, your body react. And you think, ooh, and people mistake that for the spirit. Hmm. So saying that to say there are things we experience in church where because of our lack of understanding, we assume it's the spirit. But no, actually, and so, so if we, I pray to God that we have more Dr. K's who can say, you know what? I would release those, those secret weapons that will go into politics, secret weapons that will go into entertainment. Because after all, it's about his kingdom come and his will be done. But for a lot of folks, it's not about his kingdom come, it's about the brand. So, you know, I got, to, I got to get my brand right so that I can look good in my generation, so I can be the next Oral Roberts uh, because they're judging Oral Roberts by the things, not by the impact. But Dr. K, you know, I could go on and on. The fool has never been told. <laughs> you know, I, I, when I call you ambassador, I, I say it from the, from the heart because that's what the Lord told me about you. He said you're an ambassador. Mm -hmm. I, I want to say something. Yes, uh, there's a generation that is coming up. For example, I look at the statistics in Nigeria two days ago. This is 64% of the population are under 24. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that we have a lot of work. Big Balaji, we have a lot of... There's a generation out there that is so addicted to the social media, the celebrity status, you know, their concept of success is twisted, literally twisted. And we have it right in church. It's not just out there in the world, right in church. And a lot of things need to be set right if the revival... I believe there's a revival in Nigeria right now spread into but if that revival is going to be i mean preserved and is going to go into the fullness of what god intends there, there ought to be a renewal of mind a mm -hmm. mind renewal and and i believe one of the reasons god is raising people like you is to be able to speak into the lives of a generation to be the voice that we align a generation that listen i've seen it all I, I mean i've seen greatness but at the same time it comes back to to be aligned to God's will. And the crowd is not necessarily the, the, the proof that God is in it. You know, the, the fame, the, you know, the, let me even say the money, the resources, because a lot of people, when they see a lot of money now, the fame, you know, that means he's successful. You know, he's done well for himself. And it, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. And, you know, Nigeria is a nation of extreme. Anything we take, we take it to the extreme. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth of Nigeria I mean I'm a Nigerian I've been in America for 22 years but I'm still a Nigerian at that I know how our people are I, and I believe a generation needs to be mentored tutored and I see God using you in this space a lot to you know to, to help align the generation because like you said I mean there are a lot of things people are running after these days that's I have no value as far as God is concerned. And people see those things as success. If you have it, you're successful. If your church is big, I mean, I tell people, in, in fact, for years now, when people say, how many members do you have in your church? I said, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> because I got tired of it. I got tired of it. Oh, I have a 10,000 member church. I'm like, I don't know. There are people there, a few hundreds maybe. Because, you know, it got, it got so bad that you go to minister's conference and you're meeting the minister for the first time and the first thing he's asking you is, how many members do you have in your church? Numbers. Because he's about to rate you based on, okay, are you a 10,000 member? I mean, I'm like, you know what? I don't know. We have people. I, I don't know. I don't know. Thank God for someone like people like you has known me for years. I mean, to the glory of God, a lot of big names in Nigeria now there were people that I literally fed, trained, drove. Dr. K, Dr. K, let me tell you, this is, this was, this couldn't have been more than a week ago that Bola Jolari, what you said to me, he said, listen, he said, Egmo, 
he said, and he named certain people who I, I wouldn't name. I, I, I don't want to cause a fight. He said, this person, this person, this person. He said, they, they, those, are, those are people who are boys when Dr. K was doing ministry. And I'd be like, what you, he said, he said, ah, he said let's not talk about that. He said, I could tell you stuff. And so, so for me, it just, it became, it became quite instructive because I thought, wow, this is how, and it's interesting though, because also we, the culture we have is such that uh, I, I need to look good. So I can't hollow and say, yo, people, guess what? That was my teacher. And, and, and you know, the, the people will look at uh, uh, Daddy Gio and forget the fact that Daddy Gio himself said, amongst the, the brethren, he was not the shining one. He was, he was, he was the least preferred. Yet he was the one God took out of the numbers to make who he is now. And so we, we're too busy looking at the glittery stuff. And, and there's so much you could, you could say about that. We're looking at people now uh, when they've been through so much process. And, and, and like you say, there's so much, so many young people and, and the unfortunate thing is, uh, uh, the young people yeah. that we have, a, a, you could do, do conferences, it's cool. You could do breakthrough conferences. Then they'll go on Google and tell you why actually they think the, the person's headache may have gone away uh, and explain the, the medical bits. For it. So, 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 and they will, be, they will tell you that, listen, Dog, that pastor who was doing miracle, I saw him here, here, here doing what? So they're looking for they're looking for character, they're hmm. looking for authenticity. In That's history. right. And and we're still trying to do the the flashing lights of uh, of 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 you know shout three times and you fall over and they'd be like, nah, you were dehydrated. That's what they the them kids will, will say. So Dr. K, I I really hope and pray that you you're strengthened in this in this next chapter to to go even yeah. harder and because you do stuff that you know i i'm a broadcaster i'm a musician and just like my brother i'm in the street of happiness i don't try and do i'm so deep that i will call heaven down and it'll fall in your head and you'll break now nah, i come to bring joy joy overflow uh, but then i also know that there are people who the dividing of the word, the discipleship of man, uh, the growing of the ecclesia is the thing that's been given to them. And you're one of those. So please uh, don't, don't relent, man. Don't relent because we need black men like you. Bring it strong. Bring it hard. Wow. Th th thank you so much, Ambassador. I'm Big Boladi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for bringing down the presence and you know it's this is so enriching now when we started out we just said okay let's do 15 minutes of just praising god but nobody knew it's going to get to this point and you know, i just sensed it to bring the ambassador in and i sent the invite to him and he was gracious enough to come in and you know i believe a lot of people have been blessed minds have been renewed today minds have been renewed which is so key because one of the reasons why a lot of young people are aspiring to be certain ways because of the images they've been seeing but now there's a need to set it right this is not appropriate the mere fact that you know you are so used to this pattern does not make that pattern the godly pattern so thank you for speaking the mind of god and thank you for sharing your testimony with us people and thank i'm still you. looking forward to that book I'm going, to, I'm going to talk to Ambassador about it. We need to release that book. <laughs> we'll get thank on you, Dr. Gay. Okay. Thank, yeah, thank you, sir. Everybody that's part of this, thank you. Tomorrow is going to be two sessions, 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. Chicago time, which will be 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. Nigerian time. God thank bless you. you all, and have a beautiful and amazing Thursday. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Bye, people.